It looks like things are picking up in August. There's a whole bunch of games I want to see. Let's have a look. All right, first up on August 1st, Star Wars Bounty Hunter Remastered. This is a remake of the PS2 and GameCube original, which I never played myself. But looking at some of the reviews, it wasn't the greatest game to begin with, with some of its biggest complaints being boring gameplay, which is something you never want to hear about your game. On the bright side, some of these low scores were related to technical issues, which might get resolved in this remake. Aspire, who's sporting this one, has done some great work on recent games like the Tomb Raider collection. Based on the trailers, the game gets the overall we're used to with these kind of remakes. Polished frame rates, higher resolutions, and I'm hoping for some extra stuff, but that might be too much to ask because we're talking about a Star Wars game here. Speaking of, the Django Fed Bounty Hunter the story does look interesting and I'm actually excited to try it out. Fall God of Viking 1 was a super fun but extremely hard side-scrolling action platform. I've always seen this game as the serious and grown-up version of Ghouls and Goblins. We step back in the shoes of the Barbarian King and continue his story. I'm not sure what the story was because I never finished the first level, but I'm very happy to say that developers have begrudgingly added some quality of life options, such as checkpoints and safe states for wimps like me. So now, I too can be a cool Barbarian Viking. New power-ups, new forms of magic and new energy types. Also, I'm happy that the cool soundtrack from the original is back and I'm definitely gonna pick this up. It's hard to imagine there's anybody left who doesn't know about the SteamWorld universe. But just in case, in SteamWorld Heist 2 you take control of a ragtag band of steampunk robot pirates. <laughs> yeah. Unlike the first one that focused mainly on space piratry and everything that involves that particular career path, this second one seems to revolve around some kind of calamity that's befalling the Great Sea. But don't worry, there's still plenty of plundering and turn-based ricochet shoot. Yes, the signature manual aim and ricochet combat these games are known for is back. One big change is that there is now an RTS sailing component in the game, which does make sense in the whole piratry team. <laughs> this game looks fun and I'm excited to try it. Now this game is interesting. At first glance it looks like your basic Souls-like. Grim world, lots of monsters and all the sword fighting a growing boy or girl could ever need. But on further inspection it does seem to change things up a bit. The combat lets you switch between four fallen warriors all embodied in one person. Each warrior has its own unique fighting style and background and forms different synergies with other warriors you've absorbed. There's a total of seven warriors you can absorb but you can only use four at any given time. Switching between these warriors seems to be an integral part of the combat and looks nice and smooth. And the story sounds as interesting as it's confusing. From what I understand Stand as a conflict between the Church of Death and the Cult of Life, and in an effort to survive, the Cult of Life tries to create an immortal race and ends up with the Essence Mancers, who can absorb Essence of Fallen Warriors. This certainly looks interesting, and I'm gonna keep an eye out. Also, there's a demo available if you want to try it out. I don't think this one will appeal to everyone, but it looks very interesting to me. Preserve is gonna be one of those games that's perfect for curling up on a couch with your Steam Deck for one more turn. It's a relaxing puzzle nature building game where you place plants and animals on a hex based grid to create symbiosis and synergies. You know how it is. Certain tiles go well together while others don't. Add this particular tile to this set for a bonus, but it won't work well with this tile over here. What to do, what to do. To add to the complexity, Preserve not only lets you place tiles horizontally, but lets you stack vertically as well. If you do this well and create living, thriving biomes in symbiosis with each other, you can even create natural wonders like the Alps and the Redwoods. On top of all that, the game looks very pretty and colorful. In the market for your next cozy game obsession, I think you might have found it. We don't get enough point and click adventures nowadays. And I have to admit, the most recent ones I've played are probably one of the Laser Suit Larry games. Don't judge me. But all of that is about to change with the release of the conclusion of the Sam & Max trilogy. I'm not sure if you need to have played any of the prior games to follow along, because I sure haven't, but the story sounds very entertaining. Max has stumbled upon a mysterious toy box that lets him glimpse into the future, which has of course aroused attention from villains all across the universe who want a toy for their own nefarious purposes. That trailer looks sufficiently interesting to pique my interest. Visit odd locales, eccentric characters, and solve weird puzzles with the help of the toys of power. These let Max teleport, see into the future, and read minds. Especially this last one sounds like a good point and click adventure mechanic. The game is completely remastered with read on lighting, graphics and even lip syncing. And of particular interest to me, because I'm bad at gaming, no walkthrough needed because the game detects when you're stuck and provides you with subtle hints. Or in my case, maybe not so subtle hints. <laughs> Let the hinting commence. Black Myth Wukong looks as interesting as it looks odd. You might have seen some trailers, and not to put too fine a point on it, you play as a monkey. The narrative of the game is based on the Journey to the West novel, which I never read so I can't comment much on. What we're looking at here is a Souls-like experience set in a realm based on ancient Chinese mythology. And this is going to be an interesting ride. I mean, the trailer starts with this headless guy playing a banjo, and it only gets weirder from there. Some truly weird and disturbing enemies and bosses are on display here. The combat also takes a different approach. As I 
gold standard, the staff is your only weapon, but it has a number of different stances and styles that you can switch between during combat. Staff work looks really cool, and there's a number of different things it can be used for, from parrying to traversal and magic. Another one I'm definitely picking up this month. And speaking of games, I am definitely picking up. Tactical Breeze Whistles look like a game that was made for me. This looks so good. I think you get the gist of what's going on based on the name, but you play as a wizard SWAT team. Here's what the Steam store says. Lead a team of renegade wizards and Kevlar through turn-based battles to unravel a modern conspiracy plot. <laughs> Man, I can't emphasize how cool this looks. Like any self-respecting tactics game, there are classes. Listen to this. Necromatic can heal you, but has to kill you first. The freelance storm witch, whose mastery of lightning is devastating unless her enemies aren't standing near windows. Or this, the navy seer, who can see every possible future but can't remember his own tragic backstory. <laughs> also good to see, there's a rewind function for when you screw it up. Nothing is more frustrating than pressing the wrong button and seeing your carefully laid plans going down the drain. If you're not convinced yet, this game comes from Suspicious Development. Great name who also did Gunpoint and Heat Signature, two awesome games. Concord was first teased at the most recent PlayStation Showcase in May and has been in the news quite a bit since then, but not for anything good. But let's not start you off with a bias. This is Sony's latest attempt at a team-based sci-fi multiplayer shooter, developed by Firewalk Studios, who are known for nothing, as far as I can find, <laughs> but is made up of many Bungie veterans. So it wouldn't be strange if you assumed this was going to be good. Concord will be a 5v5 team-based shooter, following in the footsteps of games like Overwatch and Destiny. The problem, and why so many people are hating on it, is one, the market is completely oversaturated with these kind of games, shown by the abysmal numbers of the open beta. 2,363 concurrent players. In comparison to Payday 3, another recent game considered a flop, with 35,000 concurrent players in open beta. And two, the game seems to be the most generic team-based shooter ever. Check out the characters. The rowdy rogue with the heart of gold. The grumpy but super competent boss chick. The strong and literal brute guy. What does this remind you of? Anyways, this is coming August 23 and I'm curious what people think about this game. A week later on 829 we have Visions of Mana. The first new entry in the series after 16 years and it looks amazing. I imagine this would happen if Dragon Quest X and Final Fantasy Integrate had a baby. I'm ashamed to say I never played any of the originals so I'm going in blind. Val and his childhood friend Hina, the newly appointed Alm of Fire, not sure what that means, set off on a journey to the mana tree. And that's all you get. They've definitely taken a swig of the old Souls-like elixir because all the fighting is in real time, with lots of swordplay, jumping, dodging and magic. You can switch characters and classes to suit your playstyle, and judging from the wiki I just briefly browsed, there are many different classes. The game is full priced at $59.99, but if you really can't wait, advanced access is available for $79.99. After all the disappointments Square has faced recently, they could use a win, and let's be honest, this game does look great. What to say about this game? It's been talked to death by both Ubisoft, who is developing this game, and reviewers. But let's go over some basics. This is the latest release in the Star Wars Galaxy, and Ubisoft's first foray in said universe. Another first is that unlike the semi-open worlds of Jedi Outcast and Survivor, this is a fully open world game. Now, we all know Ubisoft's open worlds. Go to this tower, scout the neighborhood, and then go to this icon on the map. But I really hope they can help themselves and not ubify this game too much. This being an open world also means there is now space flight, complete with combat and dodge rules. It looks really good. Another exciting development that I'm fully on board with is that it doesn't focus on the Jedi and the conflict at large. Instead, we play as Cave Vess, a cute rambunctious smuggler. You're running contracts with different underground factions, double-crossing others, and generally dodging the law wherever you can. You are helped in all of these shenanigans by your little animal helper Nyx, who could potentially end up the next baby Yoda if he plays it well. I'm excited to see how it feels to be in the shoes of a lowly smuggler compared to the all-powerful Jedi. It all looks great. Now we just need Ubisoft to keep it that way. Point being, be hopeful yet skeptical. Since it's Ubisoft, this will be in the Epic Store for the foreseeable future, with the standard edition being $69.99 premium priced buckaroos. And those are some of the games coming out in August I'm excited for. Let me know what you think, and if I missed any, check out here for my ROG Ally 2024 review and what I think of it, and I hope to see you in the next one.